So in a previous video, we talked about how we can capture and export data out of PowerShell. Well, one of the reasons we will do that is so we can compare that data later on. So we can use it as like a baseline. Let me see what my system looks like now, and then later on I'll be able to compare it to that baseline. Which you can do, so you can import that data again, and then you can compare it to your current data. And if you do that manually, that's kind of a little bit of a, pro of a pain. So what we want to do is we want to have PowerShell do that for us. Now I'm going to go ahead and capture data again, just so we have current data here that we're working with. So I'm going to do a get process. I'm going to export that to, I'm going to do it, instead of doing it in an XML file, I'm going to do it as a CSV file just because it's a little quicker. So I'm going to export CSV procs.csv. Okay, so that will capture all of my processes for me in a file called procs.csv. Right, fairly straightforward. Now, once it gets done, then we can move along with our next step. There we go. Now I'm going to start a new process. So I'm going to open up Notepad, and I'm just going to minimize that, and we'll leave that active. So um, now I wanted to look at my current processes. Now I can do I can look at my old processes first by doing the import CSV. Get that out of the way. Procs.csv. And that's going to show me all of my data. And then I can sort through that data and find a list of all of my processes. Control C because I'm done with you. Um, so I can look at that and then I could run a get process. And I could compare the data from that to the data here. Problem is that's going to be time consuming. PowerShell can actually do it for me a little bit easier. And the way we do this is with a commandlet called um, compare object. It's uh, alias is diff for diff. So the compare object commandlet takes a couple of things. So it's compare object, and we need to give it a reference file. So this is going to be the old file. And you can actually do it either way, but this is going to be a little bit of uh, easier reference file and then I'm going to do something weird and we're going to talk about it in a minute do in, uh, in parentheses import CSV procs.csv and then my difference object so this is the one that's going to be compared to my reference object is going to be get process now let's talk about how this works. If you remember algebra when you were in high school, anything that's in parentheses gets done first. It changes primary order of operations. Well, same thing happens in PowerShell. If it's in parentheses, it gets done first. So what we'll do is we'll start out by importing the CSV file procs.csv, and we're going to store that as our reference object. Then we're going to run a get process, and we're going to store all that as our difference objects. And then we're going to compare the reference to the difference objects. Now I'm going to pipe this through more because this is going to get ugly in a minute and we'll talk about why. So I am going to pipe that to more and then hit enter. And what this is going to do is it's going to import my uh, procs.csv. It's going to get processed and then it's going to show me all of the differences between them. And you're going to see a bunch of stuff going on here. Way more than we wanted and that really doesn't give us anything useful. Okay, the reason is because when we do that, it looks for any difference. And it's so it's looking, if we have the same process running twice, it's going to look for any difference. And that difference can be the amount of memory used. It can be the number of handles. It could be the amount of CPU time, CPU time used, whatever. So typically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to compare it just off of one thing. And so I'm going to compare off of the property name. And this is actually going to be way more useful. And you'll notice here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight differences. Now you're going to see the uh, property difference name, and I added notepad just to make sure that we would have one, and we actually have several. And then you're going to see the side indicator. Now, this little side indicator means it exists in the difference objects, but not in the reference objects. And this little side indicator means it exists in the reference objects, but not in the difference objects. So why would we do this? Well, what this does is this gives me the opportunity to compare against a baseline. 
And we talked in a previous video about we capture data into CSV or XML files or some other format to use as a baseline. So I can go and capture data. Six months later, I can come back and compare the processes that were running six months ago to the processes that are running now, and I can see if there's anything majorly different. Now, obviously, you don't want to do that in the middle of the day, but something like services might be a better example. I can come back a little bit later and say, all right, are there services running now that weren't running six months ago? Um, the process thing does work. Let's say you boot the machine, and you immediately capture processes. So it's not showing all the user processes, it's showing the auto-started processes. And then six months later, come back, restart the computer, and immediately do your comparison, and you'll see any processes that are different that are there at startup. So at that point, it actually becomes kind of useful. All right, so a couple of things we've done here. This is another example, a different way of using the pipeline. So typically when we use a pipeline, we'll do it by piping objects or using the little pipe thing to pipe the output of one command to the another command, the way we just did with the get process pipe it to export CSV. This is another way of manipulating the pipeline. We're just injecting things into the pipeline a little bit earlier in the process. All right. So that's your compare object commandlet in PowerShell.